This is a 2007 BMW 760 Li. And in this video, I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features and explain why it's one of the coolest cars you can buy today. This is my 2007 BMW 760 Li, as you've all come to know and love on this channel. And today we are going to be talking about its quirks and features. I do apologize for that awful joke at the start. That was my best Doug DeMero impression. And if you're watching, I'm sorry, that was, it, it, it was awful. But anyway, in the videos I've made around this car already, we have sort of, well, been looking at the straight piping and cleaning, and we've glanced over a lot of the sort of features of the car and obviously now that I've had the car several months I've had time to sort of get to grips with it and know the ins and outs of the iDrives drives and all the buttons and what they do and there's some interesting quirks and features for lack of a better term that I think you'd find interesting to know about so that's the plan for today's video really just to play with all the toys to be honest I've also got an OBD scanner reader um, which I can code various things on the car so we'll do that in today's video as well and see what features we can unlock. I really need to stop doing that. Anyway, enough of me talking. Let's jump in the car. Right, so let's start in the front of the car then. This is where you'll find most of the buttons, even though the command center in the back is the place you really want to be. I think most of the buttons are probably in the front, but let's start with the seats. Because interestingly in this car, and you may have seen before, the seat controls are actually all on this central console. This side for the passenger side, and my side for my seat. Obviously that makes sense. But anyway, up the front here, we do have one particular interesting feature on these seats. As well as them being heated and cooled, which they are in the back too, I can just recline the back part of the seat as opposed to the whole thing, which is pretty crazy. But anyway, the thing I wanted to mention is the, the massage function. Now, it's a bit of a, a cheat of a massage function because it's less of a massage and more of a just a bum squeezer. It literally is just on the base of the seat and it rolls sort of up and down, almost like someone's got a, a rolling pin, but from underneath, and they're just slowly rolling and, you know, massaging your cheeks, let's say. And actually, it's a bit of a weird one, but it's, you know, I find myself having it on a lot. It's, uh, I think the idea behind it actually is to save your legs from falling asleep on a, on a longer drive, because of course, it would mainly be chauffeurs driving this back in the day. Anyway, I quite like the feature. It's something I've not seen on a car before, and I think it's pretty cool. Another thing I have up front here, and I love actually, especially on a day like today where it's quite hot, and say so you want to keep your water nice and cool, is we have, well, it's quite interesting central compartment, which opens in two ways like that. It's quite fun. Um, but there is actually down here under everything, an air vent. And it basically just mirrors whatever setting you've got on the main AC. So on a hot day when I've got my cold AC blowing in here, as long as I have the vent switched on and open, is also blowing cold air. So if I had some water or something that I needed to keep cool, you put it in here, close it up, and it's basically, I mean, almost a fridge. But of course, in the winter, you can put something in there to keep warm as well. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Now, this is definitely a strange uh, thing to see in a car these days, which is why I'm gonna mention it. And you may have seen it if you watched my 24 hour challenge in this car, but it is this. You press here and a phone pops out. <laughs> it's literally got the numbers so you can dial and then everything you press will come up on the iDrive screen and you do it all from there. But this is connected and it's just actually a very satisfying thing to use, but also just something very quirky that you just don't see anymore. And it was very much of its time. Now, this one's a good one. Everyone, everyone asks what these are. And I certainly did before I knew these silver buttons on the wheel. What on earth are they? What you don't know is that there's actually another two on the back mirroring these. They're gear changer buttons. This is a way that you can very cumbersomely, is that a word, can you cumbersomely? But in a very cumbersome way, you can change gear. Now, as BMWs were in this generation, the two buttons on the front both downshift, so you can't upshift on the right side and downshift here. They both upshift, sorry, downshift. Do these upshift or downshift? These downshift, I think, the front one's downshift, and the ones on the back, upshift. 
So I think the idea is that you can actually drive along with one hand in manual mode and sort of upshift and, and downshift without having to reach over the other side. In reality, I never really use them unless I'm trying to do like a ton of run or something, and they're extremely, extremely cumbersome to use, but quite a quirky thing nonetheless. But yeah, in terms of buttons, I mean, everything you touch in this interior just feels super, super nice. I mean, these little drawers here that pop out are just so satisfying to use. And yeah, everything's finished lovely. I mean, the sun visors are finished in Alcantara, which obviously carries over everywhere else. But then even the door handles, or the door, what, what are they called? Door grab, grab, hand, grab handles? Are finished in the wood matching the interior, which is just so excessive, but I love it. So this thing is something that I actually was like, I pleasantly surprised to find and would never have thought this car sort of being from 2007 and actually the iDrive system being older than that, that this car would have, but it does. It's in the navigation function, which I thought I would never use on a car like this. Why would I ever use navigation? I use Waze on my phone in whatever I'm driving, but in the navigation function, you set a destination. So I mean, what have we got? Let's say we're going to my grandma Lizzie's house, which is uh, saved in the address book here. Grandma Lizzie's, United Kingdom, London, Buckingham Palace. Yeah, so we're going to my grandma Lizzie's house. Route guidance, start the route guidance, and then a few seconds later, you'll notice on my instrument cluster on the right hand side, it comes up in the middle of the screen, which is something I thought you only got on new cars. I mean, my M240i had that feature. That was a 2018 car. And I thought that was really sort of quite advanced, but here we are, 2007 car and it's got it. And it's actually a really good display that I genuinely, genuinely use more or less every time I drive anywhere significant. Just for anyone who is watching and is American and thinks that we're all related to the royal family, the Queen of England, Elizabeth, is not my grandmother. That was a joke. So here's another useful thing. I don't know what you'd really call this. You go into the iDrive again, go into climate, click this button here, and you can control, if you go into extra, whether the rear cool box, i.e. the fridge, is on or off. So I can do that from here. Uh, and I think ridiculously, you can even do that from the back iDrive system. So instead of turning and reaching for the fridge button, you just do it in here. Much easier, really. So before I jump in the back and show you all of the interesting stuff back there, let's do some coding. Carly have very kindly sponsored this video. I've worked with Carly over several years now. So obviously I got this car. Carly very kindly agreed to sponsor the video again and also offer you guys an incentive to get one of your own readers with 15% off. So next thing to do then is open up the Carly app and connect to my car, which I've got selected here. Connect. And so what I'm also gonna do is just start the engine as well. I apologize to all the wildlife around. I hope I don't kill anything. I think we're all right. Okay, we're connected. Fault probability low. Now, full disclosure, I did actually read the codes maybe a week ago or two weeks ago um, and cleared them. So hopefully there's not too much that comes up, but we'll actually do that first. We'll read the fault codes and see if there's any issues. The ones I'm gonna expect is something with the fog light and um, the parking sensors. 11 issues found. 11 issues, 11 issues, just 11, just 11 issues. When I bought this car, oh, oh dear. Health status, very bad. Yeah, there we go. So rear fog light defective, that's fine. Power module, error with the battery apparently. Park distance control. But what we can see is that all of the major systems, i.e. air suspension, engine, everything like that, all fine. I'm gonna do this now though and just clear the issues. What this actually does though, which is really nice, is if you did have any warning lights on the dash, by clearing the issues, it will clear those warning lights as well because sometimes you might have an issue and you know what it is and it's not actually a problem, but it's triggering a light. So this is just a nice way of getting rid of those. So there we go, that's done. Another thing that I've never really mentioned, but I do actually use from time to time, is you can look at live data. So if you, I don't know, you're monitoring your engine or the coolant temperature, something that the car doesn't normally tell you, you can actually get live readouts of, so that's the engine RPM there. Um, and I can see that it's actually relatively stable, which is nice. But yeah, like the coolant, for example, I don't have a way of seeing the coolant temperature. So 
this way, it uh, lets me see it. So that's quite a nice little feature, actually, which I've not really ever talked about. So on this car, well, there's seven modules that we can code. What it will do also is every time you open it, it will create a backup. So you can always revert to what you had before if you don't like it or if something doesn't work quite right. So in this one, which is comfort and locking functions, uh, you can do, I mean, all sorts of stuff that quite honestly, I wouldn't really bother. I mean, comfort open using remote. So I think that means that I can open the windows with the key, which is on and also close them. Something I've actually just seen, which I need to do is the car doesn't lock itself automatically when I drive away. But I found that threshold speed for vehicle locking, I'm gonna set it to eight miles per hour and then the car will lock itself automatically, which is good. Save circulation settings. So this is actually a really handy one where every time I get in the car, because it's all done electronically, um, it'll remember exactly what I had the air conditioning set to. So most of the time, obviously I have it set and pretty much use that all the time. So that's actually quite nice. On the instrument cluster, we have the option to turn on a digital speedometer, which is pretty cool. On this module, you can do things like configure the indicator so that when I tap it once like that, I can choose the amount of clicks that it does, which I actually did change to five, which I found quite useful. Um, and also things like audible locking and unlocking. So when I unlock the car and lock it, it now makes a beep, whereas before that wasn't the case. So that's actually quite a handy thing too. If you want to as well, you can also change the brightness settings of each light, the angel eyes, the eyebrow lights, the indicator. You can literally choose the brightness of those. I've pretty much left them all standard, but there's a ton of stuff that you can actually do there. And the other thing I'm actually just gonna code now is the ability to close the boot with the footwell switch, which I think is this one here, and also with my key. So that's actually gonna be quite handy because I can open it at the moment with my key, but not close it. Uh, same goes for this button. So I'm gonna code that so I can close it too. All sorts of cars have all sorts of different features. And in fact, they don't just support BMW, they support a ton of other brands too. Likelihood is if you have a look at your car, they will support it. So yeah, like I say, I have been using Carly for years now as I've been working with them. And to be honest, genuinely, um, I will always use Carly. I, I couldn't not have it now, just for the ease of being able to check codes if something comes up, you just wanna know what it is or switch a warning light off or unlock sort of cool features like I've just shown a few of there. The other thing that's quite interesting is of course it does save you money. Um, it costs about five euros a month for the full subscription of the app, which allows all of the functionalities. And you have to buy the adapter of course as well, which there's a discount on using my code. But over, I mean a year, if you use the thing a couple of times, you've made your money back because if you had to take the car to a garage every time you needed something diagnosed, it would add up to be a lot more. So anyway, honestly, um, a product and an application I cannot recommend enough. And so you can go ahead now and get 15% off the OBD reader. So big thanks again to Carly for sponsoring this video. And now let's jump in the back of the car, my favorite place in the car, and show you some more quirks and features. All right, so I always love getting in the back of here. It's my favorite place. First interesting feature of this car is the soft closed doors. Kind of, I don't know, are they pointless? I don't really see any real need for them, but they certainly just give a feeling of luxury. But also the doors are actually hydraulically operated on a piston here. And no matter where you leave the door, it will just stay. And these doors are actually surprisingly light. You'd think they're a lot heavier, but I guess they're basically power assisted. So very, very nice indeed. Of course, the TV screen is a party piece in the back of this car. And probably the best thing you can do on it, even though it looks like it's out of the stone age, is watch television. And so you pop the television on and you do that all with the iDrive system here, which is interesting. And, um, to adjust the volume, you do that on a button, which is a scroll wheel here. So I can adjust the volume without really lifting a finger quite literally, which is great. However, on the other side, they also have their own button. So it means if I was sitting on that side, I wouldn't have to reach over to this side and use this button, I can use my very own. So I guess you can have a finger war with the passenger next to you and argue about how loud you want your Beethoven to be. Next up, as well as the front, we've got all of our seat controls for both seats in the center console. And like the front, they're heated and cooled in the rear too, which is super, super cool. But what you can't do in the front is manipulate this. So from the back here, I can press a little button and then everything I do will manipulate this seat and not mine. So it means that if I was in the back here, 
I could move that out of the way and get myself some extra leg room. Or if I just hated the guts of the person in the front, I could cave their knees in. It's nice to have the option to do either, I think, yeah. My favorite toy in the back of this car though, apart from the fridge, which again, as I mentioned, instead of pressing this button here to switch it off, I can do that in the iDrive because that's just, that's actually too strenuous. I don't want to hurt myself. So I'm going to turn the fridge back on in here. But apart from that, my favorite toy has to be the blinds. I think any car that has blinds just says so much about how much you've made it in life. I mean, I haven't made it in life whatsoever, but I have blinds and I just think it's so cool. So I have three blinds that I can control. I've got the ones that you just saw me put up. So the bigger section here, and then a smaller section has its own blind there. And of course the big rear blind, which is actually just such a cool thing to behold. The mechanism on it is quite funny, but that's not enough because I'm important. So the other side obviously has blinds as well, but I, there's no way, no way you're gonna catch me reaching over to control them. So the driver can put them all up or down at my request, but actually what's a lot easier is if I just flick this switch over to the right here, I can then manipulate said blinds on the other side from my own seat, which is very, very cool and uh, totally unnecessary, but perfect. Once you've got it, you can't imagine not having it. Lastly then, a couple of extra things in the back of this car is air conditioning. You have your own air conditioning units on each side for each passenger which is individually controlled and very, very nice to have, especially on a warm day like today, actually. And also you may be thinking, well, where are the cup holders? Well, they're tucked away very plush into the seats here and they pop out and they're actually really good and they fit all sorts of cups, which is obviously very handy. But I just like how they tuck away like that out the way when you don't need them and you've just got that extra space. It's honestly such a nice place to sit. Now, before I put you all out of your misery and end this video, there's just a few things on the outside of the car which I think are quite interesting. So I'll show you those and then I will shut up and let you all get on with your lives. Obviously this car is designed to be extremely comfortable, but hydraulic suspension isn't enough. This thing has air suspension at the back, which is actually active. And so although I don't really understand, essentially it reduces body roll by moving as you go through a bend. And it is also air suspension so it's just very very supple and soft in the back of the car this car weighs over two tons and is over five meters long however it is a bmw and the motorsport filters through of course and they can't help but make it aerodynamic now aerodynamic is pushing it but the wing mirrors actually have little slats in and the only reason i can imagine they've done this is to reduce drag from the wing mirrors i mean it seems like this minute thing is almost completely futile and pointless given the absolute block of a brick of cement this is. But it's just quite quirky and funny that they've actually gone to the effort of making the wing mirrors ever so slightly more aerodynamic. I mean, I have to say, it's 450 brake horsepower, so it still pulls like a train. The windscreen washer jets on this car are heated, which is a pretty cool thing in itself. But what I think is even cooler and a bit more quirky is the actual mechanism of the windscreen wipers themselves. It's hard to explain, so I'd better show you, but it's just one of those things that's just so over-engineered, it seems you just wonder why. God knows how much it is to replace something like that if it goes wrong, but it looks really cool. Let me show you. So naturally, with this being one of the early iDrive cars, you have the ability to check the engine oil level from the iDrive itself, which is very handy, but, oh my God, look at that engine. It's ridiculous. Bloody hell. <laughs> but they also left an actual dipstick. So you can still check the oil manually. It's just gone flying everywhere, but we're gonna ignore that just for the purpose of the video. It's got a dipstick, which is quite nice if you like sort of checking the oil manually like me. I've got a stick I can play with. Right then, so there was some strange quirks and features with my 760 Li. Can you tell how long it is when I stand here? Look. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. I've wanted to do that for a while since I got the car because really, I think, I don't know, is this the thing that makes you guys most interested in it? Is all the toys? For me, that's the thing that makes me feel like a little kid. I mean, as well as it being a straight pipe V12, I mean, that sort of does the job as well. But 
all the toys and buttons and stuff just make me feel like a kid again because I would have loved it if my dad had a car like that when I was a kid although I still act like one so I wouldn't blame you for mistaking me for one anyway I do like to waffle and I apologize for that but thank you so much for watching this video um, honestly big thanks to Carly again for sponsoring it because as I said they've worked with me for a number of years now and they've always been brilliant brilliant people to work with so if you are interested in getting yourself 15% off your very own OBD reader you can do that right now with my code uh, using the link in the description and the pinned comment so guys thanks so much because by doing that you're also supporting the channel and i really appreciate it but otherwise if you could just subscribe to the channel with those notifications turned on give this video a big fat thumbs up and in the meantime comment below what else you'd like to see with my 760 li i'd really appreciate it so until then guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you very very soon